previously on 253 Matilda. And finally, it's done. Our acceleration has ended. I had a blackout. Mayor, there's something wrong with our shields. How long before we're in trouble? You should start evacuating everyone to the deeper levels immediately. We're implementing evacuation plan 1B. Repeat, 1B. Depressurization event, levels 1 through 6. Emergency hatches, ceiling. That's only one level above us. Let me through. You can't go back that way, Nurse Okonkwo. My husband's still on level 6. I'll go get him myself. Mayor, that's suicide. I think we're done for. I'll come up and get you. No! That's an order, Eva. Probably hit the Armstrong limit any second now. I can't just leave you to die. Yes, you can. It's your job. I hope. And now. Thank you for that tribute, Eva. During my five decades as your priest, it's been my sad duty to come to this beautiful arboretum to oversee the departures of far too many of our friends and colleagues. But sometimes, as with Mayor Hu, the sadness is accompanied by a feeling of honour and privilege for having known such a person, for having been able to call him my friend. These are dark days, with many challenges to come, with so much of our base damaged. As bad as things are, and even as we mourn our dead, we know the death toll could have been far worse, were it not for the man whose quick, calm leadership evacuated so many in time. The man who gave his life to try to evacuate one more person. Mayor Hu was my third mayor and he had a tough act to follow. And the extra challenge of taking office at a young age, he took over just a few months after our previous mayor gave her life to save us all from the relativistic kill vehicle that was bearing down on us. Maybe Mayor Hu's stage wasn't quite as grand, but his spirit of selfless sacrifice was every bit as great as Mayor Renata Latumbo's. As we lay his ashes with our most honoured dead, let his spirit inspire us to pull together through our current crisis. QuietPlease.org presents 253 Matilda. After leaving the solar system in the 22nd century, the asteroid 253 Matilda now travels the galaxy at near light speed. For her residents, the journey has been 134 years. For the rest of the galaxy, it's been hundreds of thousands of years. Episode 21, Time Out of Joint. Let's start with Chief Tojo's report. Are we out of immediate danger? The shields recovered to full power. I just wish I could say exactly what happened and be sure it won't happen again. The graph of the power drain looks to me like we passed through some sort of phenomenon. Can't really hazard a guess as to what. Chief Lawrence, was there anything unusual in our neighborhood? Not that I know of, but at this speed, we can't see anything ahead of us in any useful sense. Can you think of any spatial phenomenon that could theoretically drain our shields? Here, here's the pattern. It doesn't bring anything to mind. Stone, I see you're representing Botany Section. That's right. Chief Rogers and her assistant are missing and presumed dead, so I've come out of retirement to help. Since it's rather important that we eat, about that, how is the food situation looking? About 30% of our production was on the levels we lost. Since we haven't lost anywhere near that many lives, that means some serious rationing for the time being. But I think we can make it work. 
won't be comfortable, and there won't be as much food variety, but nobody will starve to death. How long until we're back to normal food production? A few months, if all my personnel requests are approved. Otherwise, maybe years. For the duration of the emergency, we should move all the personnel from non-essential sections, like astronomy, into critical places like botany and repair details. Eva, what in the world gave you the idea that you're in charge here? Somebody has to be. So, you're just going to appoint yourself mayor before anybody has a chance to disagree? According to our constitution, an acting mayor needs the approval of a majority of section chiefs. Shall we vote? Hold on. This shouldn't be a one-candidate farce. We need to consider other options. I'm willing to volunteer. Still haven't quite conquered that ego problem, have you, Dr. Stone? I mean, Emeritus Botany Chief Stone. Stone is a former chief filling in for someone we lost. Salish Peters served as our acting mayor last time something like this happened. Why don't we bring him back? Peters is what, 90-something years old? It's a good idea, but does he want the job? I bet he won't say no in our moment of need, and it'll just be temporary. I'll explain to him that to have a fair election, we need an acting mayor who doesn't have any long-term ambitions for the job. Just what are you implying? What is it, Dr. Singh? Can I borrow stone from you? You know I don't practice medicine anymore, doctor. This is more of a data analysis and theoretical thinking issue than a treatment issue. I could use another pair of eyes, and I think you'll find this very interesting. He's busy dealing with our food problems, so... You intrigued me, Dr. Singh. I can give you a couple of hours. Let's go. We should adjourn until I've talked to Peters. There's some things on the agenda here that really need to get done. Based on the data here, uh, telomere length, cellular decay rate, methylation patterns, hormonal cycles, how much time would you say passed between this patient's last two scans? Oh, I'm a bit out of shape for this. The readings are similar though, so not too long. Precisely, please. Well, that's a job for a computer. Computer, use the aging markers of these two physicals to determine the time between them. 33 days, 11 hours, 47 minutes. Margin of error? Three minutes. There you have it. What of it? The actual time is 33 days, 11 hours, 39 minutes. There's a slight error in the algorithm, some condition not anticipated. It happens. What if I told you there's a discrepancy for all the evacuees who are working on the top two levels? Oh. Could they all have been exposed to something that altered their biological markers slightly? Made them effectively age a few extra minutes? Except, not all of them aged extra. Some aged slightly less than they should have. All within a small margin of variance? Anywhere from seconds, although of course that's meaningless since it's within the margin of error, to about 10 minutes off. I called in some people from other levels for scans, and those were all within the normal margin of error. Only the evacuees from levels 1 and 2 have the unexpected variance, and it's a stronger variance on level 1. Oh, you're right. I do find this interesting. Is there any way to know exactly where people may have been, more precisely than what floor? There's workstation location records for those who are at work, and we could assume those not scheduled for a shift were in their bedrooms. Here, I've had the computer generate a list. Computer, render this location data on the map so we can visualize it. There, not wholly accurate, but this should give us a good idea. Look at this. The negative aging is clustered on the north side, positive in the south. And the largest variances in both directions are around this one spot on the top level. That's in Hydroponics Bay, too. Oh, if only we could get up there. Uh, 
I'm flattered, but I might be too old for the rigors of the mayor's office, especially in a crisis like this. We'll all be here to help you. We need somebody who can make people feel safe during this disaster recovery, who can keep people from turning to the Doomers for comfort. You know, this is the Doomers' dream scenario for gaining converts. They'll pull out all the stops to take advantage of it. It's not the time for a greenhorn. The people need to hear a voice they've always known and always trusted. Surely you or any of the other section chiefs could provide that voice. We just need somebody to arbitrate between us. Somebody we can all trust. Are the section chiefs really so at odds that there's nobody who wants the job that you all trust? I didn't want to come right out and say this, but I'm not convinced the internal candidates would give us a fair election. Because they've got ambitions to hold the job permanently. Whereas I don't want it. Salish, the wife and I want to borrow your hollow projector. It comes the baby. Knock yourselves out! It's your home now, apparently. You're not wanting the job as your best qualification. Means you can organize a clean election that'll allow our next mayor to rule without any whiff of scandal that might otherwise poison our community for a generation. Now that our mission is ending, there's nothing external to unite us. So there's a risk we'll turn on each other if we can't trust that we have the right leader. Sorry, we'll fix that. Would being acting mayor make me exempt from hosting a displaced family? If you say so, it will. Well, how long would I have to do it? Just until we're out of this crisis and can organize an election. But is an election going to be anybody's priority right now? A few months. I'll hold you to that. Then you're on board? I can report for duty as soon as the section chiefs have voted. Might be more relaxing than staying home. Great. I'll call a vote within the hour. It happened again, Doc. More memory loss? This time I was at home. Both times, there was nobody with you who you could ask about the missing time? That's right. I think being told what you were doing in your missing time would help break the mental block and speed your recovery. Someone could assure you that you were normal the whole time, that you were you. Hmm. Might be good for you to live with someone just for a little while, while you're dealing with this problem. As it happens, I don't have any choice in the matter with the refugee crisis. I'm moving in with Marissa today so we can meet the occupancy requirement for her unit size without taking in another family. We'll leave my unit to the refugees. Great. That'll be perfect. Hopefully, she'll see your next incident. But what if it happens while she's at work? Maybe you can tag along to her work too. Bet she can use some help since she lost her prime shift assistant. Congratulations, Mayor. Thanks, Dr. Stone. Acting Botany Chief Stone. Oh, yeah. Have you had a chance to read the report Dr. Singh just sent you? About the aging anomalies? I was just skimming it when you came in. We need to send somebody up there. To the top level? But it's not pressurized. We've got spacesuits, and we can use level 7 like an airlock. Same way as we recovered Mayor Who's body. Oh, I wasn't here for that. I didn't think about how it was done. Can't imagine people who live on level 7 would appreciate another temporary evacuation, though. It's absolutely essential that we understand what's happened to us to keep it from happening again. And these aging anomalies are telling me there's an important piece of the puzzle up there in Hydroponics Bay, too. I suppose you'd like to be the one to go? If I were ten years younger. But no. I'd suggest sending Dr. Singh. She should have someone with her. Someone to evaluate structural issues and the technical side of things. Say, Chief Mick Flint? You mean Chief Tojo? Tojo? Ferratojo. The roots were retired a few months ago. Remember, you were at a retirement party. Oh, of course. Yes. Eva Hernandez here. What is it, Mayor? Eva? Are you busy? Not especially. Just chatting with some of Mayor Hu's family. Reminiscing. Then I'd like you to organize a temporary evacuation of Level 7 right away. 
and have Chief Tojo and Dr. Singh report to my office. Testing, testing. Loud and clear. Been a long time since I've been in one of these suits. I never have. They should let everybody go to the surface at least once. It's a life-changing experience. A potentially deadly one. Okay, I'm evacuating the air. Opening the hatch. Should I use this button to jet upwards? Yes, the air jet. Use short bursts at one-fifth power. That's plenty with the low gravity now. Let's go. It's scary. <laughs> I lived on level six, and now, to see it like this? I think we'll be able to repopulate this level pretty soon. Just one hole, and everything seems structurally sound. Good news for me. And for the Amatis who have to put up with me until then. That... that smear up ahead? It's blood, yes. That's where the mayor and Okonko died. It doesn't sublimate away? Not if the staining happens while there's an atmosphere. Besides, it's pretty near absolute zero up here now. Okay, let's move up and check out level five. I think most of this level is okay. Just gonna be a couple rooms that take a lot longer to reopen than the rest. Mayor? Yes? Who is this? Dr. Singh. Do you want us to check every room for bodies? What? Bodies? On the upper levels, Mayor. Should we make a detailed study or prioritize our destination? Oh. Uh, yeah. why don't you just get straight up to level one to see what we're dealing with, and on your way back down, if there's time, you can identify the dead. Okay. How's the damage look so far? About like I expected. Actually, not quite as bad. I'll make more detailed notes on our way back. All right. Call me again when you're on level one. Are you feeling all right, Mayor? I'm not used to working anymore. Maybe you should take a break. Too much to do. What's this about personnel transfers? You should really let me worry about these things for you. All it needs is your thumbprint. But why are we shutting down astronomy section? It was on the top level. It was completely destroyed. But most of the telescopes on the surface are still out there, right? The people could do their work from a new location or from home. What purpose does astronomy section serve anymore? We can't change our velocity. We can hardly see anything through the relativistic distortion. And our exploration missions are over. We need those people transferred to help us rebuild and eat. It's still our mission. Exploration, observation, that's why we're here. Chief Lawrence, your ears must have been burning. But why'd the door open for you? I guess I'm pre-approved. What can I do for you, Chief? I expect you've been told that we don't need an astronomy section anymore? Sounds familiar. Well, I was doing some research and I've got a proposal I think you'll find interesting. What is it? We've still got one deceleration vehicle, the backup vehicle from the last mission, and we've got enough ore. We can explore one last system. From this velocity, decelerating enough for a landing is a pretty crazy expensive proposition. How many years would we be shaving off our future by wasting that ore? It'll take about 30 years worth, but that just means we'll have to stop issuing birth permits. We'll still have enough to cover the lives of everyone currently living. Sounds good. Let's get on that. Mayor, I have to caution you to rethink what you're doing. You're sacrificing a whole future generation just so two more people can play on yet another alien planet. But it's what we're out here for. We're explorers. We explore. This is the mission. 
I'll get my people to compile a list of the most interesting potential systems for study. Bring the chief, Chief Tojo, into it with you once she's back. Peter's here. This is Chief Tojo. We've reached the top level. What's it look like? Massive damage up here. The walls are half melted. A lot of holes overhead. I can see the sky. Hold up there. Radiation levels are unsafe that direction. Let's try this way. Don't here. Doctor, are you close to the, uh, let's call it the anomaly area? Uh, the center of the aging anomalies would be about 30 meters ahead, but we're just coming up to a big hole on the floor. I think it'd be in the middle. No floor under it. Tracking the gap shouldn't be a problem in this gravity, even without the air jet. Stopping in the middle of it could be, though. You're sounding a bit odd, John. I was about to say the same to you. You're talking really slow and deep. I don't see anything. I'll try the scanner. I'm reading in topic section from the aerospace time field and a strong distortion in the field. But it's not coming from a spot ahead of us. It's from somewhere above and beyond that. Pretty sure it's on the surface. Temporal effects may be stronger up there. The radiation looks okay, though. Well, what are you waiting for? Get up there. To be honest, I'm kind of scared about floating off where there's no walls or ceiling. I've never been in a wide open space. I'll go first. Wait here, Doc. I'll do a one second air jet and coast the rest of the way. Can you see anything yet? Nothing where our anomaly doors should be. The impact debris spread around its surface. Actually, what's really odd is there's an area you'd expect to have debris that doesn't. And I see. That's right about where the anomaly ought to be centered. I'm hearing a lot of odd distortions in your voice. Like you're speeding up and slowing down. Not consistent like how stone sounds so fast. Through the field is causing localized disruptions to the flow of time. Maybe sort of like relativistic effects on a very small scale? Don't ask me how that's possible. A lot of people are definitely going to be asking that. I'm running another scan and I'm taking the exact source of the ring. That's how that is. Chief! Vera! Vera, can you hear me? What's going on? I'm coming up there. Dr. Singh, can you see Chief Tojo? No, I'm... I'm at the surface. I took a 360 degree look around me. I see the spot she was talking about where there's no debris, which she said was the center of the anomaly. But there's no one in sight. Is there any sort of hole or depression that she could have fallen into? Look carefully. No, it's flat and smooth out here. Remember we melted the surface. This doesn't make any sense. I'm moving toward that spot she said she was going to. No, stop! Stay away from there! Are you sure? The closer you get, the slower your voice sounds to me. Same thing happened with her. And yours has been getting faster for me. You have a theory? Only that the center of the anomaly is either frozen in time or, uh, even in our past. Like, uh, singularity? There's, there's no gravimetric gradient. Maybe that could explain the lack of debris. If what I'm seeing is a time before we were hit. But where does that leave Chief Tojo? I'm not sure, but losing you isn't going to help. Come back inside. I feel like I have to do something. I can't just leave her. If she's frozen in time, then we have all the time in the world. If she's in the past, then we're already too late. You've been listening to 253 Matilda, Episode 21, Time Out of Joint. 
Created, written, produced, and directed by Paul Neerim. Dr. Singh is Loretta Chang. Stone is John Gauntz. Astronomy Chief Lawrence is James Lorenz. Salish Peters is David Loftus. Chief Tojo is Gwyneth Knight. Eva Hernandez is Lindsay White. Father Kim is David Nagel. Dr. Tam Peters is Ahmad A.J. Judah. Larissa Flint is Lindsay Townsend. The male roommate was Eric Weston. The announcer is Aaron Summonsby. Sound effects and music, courtesy freesound.org, asoundeffect.com, freepd.com, and audionautics.com. This program is licensed for free reuse and redistribution. Hear more episodes at quietplease.org slash 253.